team manager for John Jones, for Tyron Woodley, for Aljamain Sterling. He had another fighter on the card named Eric Shelton, who did not win. Three and one for first round management. They're doing big things. And I do believe Malki Kawa is joining us via the magic of Skype right now. Is he there? Are you playing Tyson's punch out? I'm here. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry? I, I heard like the bell from Mike Tyson's punch out. Oh, no, that was just a car pulling up to, uh, what do you call it? Where are you at? San Francisco 49ers, what do you call it? I'm on San, Fr- San Francisco. Wow. What do you call it? 49ers facility. You're at Levi Stadium right now? So, yes, sir. Hold on a second. Let me try to see if I can flip this around so you guys can see it. Your I'm forehead looks forehead. great. What's up, boss? <laughs> Does it? I'm sorry. How about now? Can you guys see me? There yeah, you. yeah, I can see you. So you go from cage side. Frog. Oh. Yeah. Last name is K A W A. What's I mean, name? what is going on here? W A. Yeah. Huh? Malky. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get clearance into this thing. Coming to see my guy. Can we get your Camp attention 11, for a couple uh, minutes? Over here. I mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm here. Uh, we go from cage side. Your guy's fighting in the main event. Regaining his title now. I think yesterday you were at Cowboys camp. Now you're at 49ers camp. How do you juggle all of this? Uh, doing the best I can. I was in uh, Oxnard yesterday to see the Cowboys. I got a client on the Cowboys. So I went there, saw uh, my clients in the Cowboys, and then took a flight this morning. I'm here right now in San Jose to see uh, my 49ers. Okay, so let's talk about Saturday. Is there a sense of relief? I know you were confident. You were all confident. John looked tremendous all week. He looked very relaxed. But now that he finally came back and looked the way in which he did, like you, you've been with him from the very you know beginning of this run, and, and people were criticizing you and saying that you were part of the problem and you should get rid of him, and Dana White saying that management should change, all that stuff and more. You made it back. You regained the title. Still the pound-for-pound pound king. Still the goat, all that stuff and more. What are the emotions 48 hours later? I mean, it was excitement. You know what I mean? I don't know if it was relief. All that other stuff that everybody's talking about was just noise. I don't, you know, Ariel. At this point, you, you, nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a very confident person, and when I know that I've done what I needed to do, I can't worry about all that other noise. You know what I mean? Um, so it was just excitement. It was, it was. Uh, well, we knew what would happen. Uh, we, you know, he'd been calling for a, a stoppage all week. We figured that we, you know, he'd stop him. My brother said third round uh, KO. So we, we kind of knew it was going to happen. But we were just, you know, we we're excited for him because I felt like. Not necessarily relief, but it was just like you could put that chapter behind him and move forward, and that's all we kind of wanted to do. How'd you score it going into the third, by the way? I had a John up 2-0, but I could have seen, you know, where it was 1-1 on a lot of people's cards. So it was, it was close. I, I thought it was close. Um, I, I know you're not a coach, but I know you're privy to all the conversations. Have you seen this clip of John and DC talking about the left head kick three years ago when they were preparing yeah, for once? So th- this is something they were looking for, they knew about. Yeah, I mean, you got to understand, John's team is really, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, Who's calling you now? Uh, uh, it's the 49ers. <laughs> the gate, thanks to you, I'm stuck here, so. Uh, <laughs> this is, but by the way, whatever you're doing there today, this is way bigger. I just want you to know. I doubt it, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, you're a very confident guy, too, as well. Yes. I give it to you. But no, but I'm saying, um, you know, he's got, he's got arguably the best team in the world. And, you know, Six Gun Gibson and, and Izzy Style, they break down a lot of film. And then, of course, Greg and Wink bring stuff together. But, I mean, dude, they, they've known about this for three years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I'm not going to sit here and say that they called that or said, hey, we're going to do this in the third round, just do this and that. But, I mean, they knew a lot. Of, I mean, if you look at John, the majority of the strikes that he landed, the, the, the knee stuff, the leg stuff, a lot of his kicks, his punches, all of it landed. Yeah. And that's all preparation, hard work, and, and, and him going out there and executing. Do me a favor, uh, tilt down your camera so we can see your mouth, because now we just see your eyes, and I want to see the whole the whole package. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so so he was very gracious, and I gave him a lot of props for that. I thought, I mean, it was just phenomenal how he reacted to the win and what he said about DC afterwards. Did any of that surprise you? No, it didn't. I think this is the maturation process of John Jones. You guys are starting to watch it. Yeah. So. You guys, you guys are seeing John Jones just, you know, being John Jones. You know, listen, he's always been a good guy. He's always been a good dude. People didn't really see that a lot of times. And, you know, when you get into promotional fights and, you know, the different, the different, uh, and then the different, the different, you know, uh, how do I say, like, um, you guys see a lot of the outside stuff, like the promotion stuff and, 
you know, the, 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 the internet stuff and things of that nature. I know him and he's always been a gracious and humble guy. He's never really had a problem with anybody. A lot of the stuff that he told you guys was true. He never hated DC, never had a problem with DC. That was all, you know, pretty much on his side, DC side. Um, but John, you know, it's just putting an end to it. It's just the maturation of John Jones. You guys are seeing it full circle. You know what I mean? You, you, you start, like you said, you start from the first, uh, the, the, you know, they're looking, they're looking, um, you started, they started this whole thing in the Honda Center yeah. years back. And then it came full circle back in the Honda Center. And, you know, there's all this stuff that happened in between. And I just think that this was the perfect exclamation point. You know what I mean? For his mo mo movement forward. Are, are you also hearing that it's doing close to a million? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's phenomenal. What, what would John, what would John... That's the, that's the draw of John Jones. Yeah. People missed him. He's still, he's still of interest. What would he make if it gets a, a, over a million? What would he walk away with? A lot. He'll make, he'll make a lot. He makes a lot already as it is. A lot of people see all that stuff that gets reported on the internet. Been yeah. guys for a long time. John is the highest paid guy in the UFC. You know what I mean? Aside from pay-per-view, just on the base guarantees. And a lot of people never, I guess, never believe me. So I just keep letting you guys believe what you guys want to believe. But the pay-per-view stuff is just extra. More than Connor? Listen, I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just letting you guys know that he's he's definitely up there in top two or three. If it gets over take, a million, that and run with it. If it gets over a million buys, does he make over 10 million? Eric, come on, brother. You know why are you so okay? But in your sport, you're going to do NFL stuff. All that stuff is public. Why is it so secretive in our sport? Uh, just because you know what I mean. I don't necessarily need to put his business out there like that. All right, fair he enough. Doesn't, he doesn't necessarily like all that, but I mean, he makes. Listen, just put it like this: he makes good money. And he'll be making more money now. Obviously, if the pay per view does really well, he'll be making even more money. So that I can't beat any of that. That actually leads to my next question: What is the business? I asked you about this uh, a year ago about the business of John Jones. Did you think, okay, you do what you need to do, you win dominantly, you do your thing, and now the sponsors will roll back, the blue chip sponsors, are you sensing that already? What is it like now being in business with him after he came well, I mean, back listen, and looked that good? This whole entire time, we... Hold on a second. So, the, the, uh... This whole entire time, Monster Energy, which is one of, one of the blue chip sponsors for the UFC, and one of the, uh... You know, big, bigger, one of the bigger sponsors out there in the world, right, sponsoring him. They've been sponsoring him for the last two years. And then you've got Everlast, which is the, the premier combat sports, you know, provider when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, equipment and stuff like that, right, combat yeah. sports equipment. They've been sponsoring him forever also as well. So, and then you've got Gat Nutrition. That's been a major sponsor for him. That's been a huge deal for us, you know what I mean, for the last two years also as well. Now, if you're talking about the Nikes, the Adidas and those guys, yeah. you know what I mean? I just, I think that as in time goes on, and their, you know, interest in the sport continues to to be what it is. Well, uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is this: you know, Nike tested the waters with John, and then they, come, you know, they've been out of it and never wanted to go back into it. And yep. I don't know that that was a necessarily a John thing or more of a Nike thing, where they're just not into combat sports. But as guys like John come around, right? Guys like Conor McGregor come around, people like Ronda, you know, women like Ronda Rousey come around. The excitement in combat sports, then you know what I mean, goes through the roof, and then companies like that want to come into it um you see a lot of them in boxing you don't see a lot of them in mma and so i think that as time as this fight you know has taken I, my phone doesn't stop blowing up and i've been calling a lot of sponsors and stuff and they're all all the interest that i've had in the past is 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 uh it's still there you know what i mean it's, it's it's all come back so we'll see what happens um and so at this so very interesting we, you, you got you got like 10 minutes or are you busy there Absolutely. No, we're good, bro. Oh, all right, all right. You, you, you're, making, guys, what do you call it? you're making me well, nervous with all your moving and looking around, talking to people. Jeez. No, no, I'm just listening. You caught me at a time when it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. All right, all right. Oh, good. What's um, going on? You good? John had, you stay with me, Ariel, or what? I'm still with you, bro. I'm still with you. <laughs> all right, buddy. Uh, listen, very interesting comments about Dana White leading up to the fight. What was it like afterwards? Did they bury the hatchet? Will he just ignore him? How how is this? How are they going to work in unison, promoter and fighter, uh, if know, they're not I, talking? It, it, I, no, I listen. All of that will get resolved in time. All that will get resolved in time. I mean, I sat with Dana after the fight and dealt with uh, and dealt with what do you call it with uh, Demetrius, uh, DJ. Yeah. And yeah, with, with Demetrius Johnson and that, you know what I mean? It's slowly taking shape as well there, and that also get taken care of also. Okay, so you're not worried that you know they won't like, push him. Listen, there's there, Huh? You're you're not worried that they won't push yeah, him yeah. as a result of this strained relationship. They won't get behind him. That it will get personal things like that. No, dude. Listen, I, you know I'll tell you one thing about John, the way he runs his business and the way he operates. 
nobody can make him do anything he doesn't want to do. So that, that won't happen. I mean, I think you guys have already seen what he did after the fight. He called out Brock Lesnar. And it's, you know, it's probably uh, has a lot of hurdles to make happen. And I think he kind of let them know, this is what I want to do next. And, you know, hopefully they'll get on that and try to make that happen. So it's just, dude, it's, it's, it's just different. You know how it is. I think um, uh, it'll all get resolved. I'll just put it to you like that. It's not as bad as it seems. I just think that, you know, obviously he went through a lot and expected some stuff from Dana. And I think Dana has his own ideas on some stuff. And, you know, it's just getting two sides together, sitting in a room and hashing it out. I did that with DJ and Dana um, Saturday. I'll do that with Dana and John at some point if, if John and Dana want to. And we'll see if we can get it resolved. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. But they didn't do it Saturday night after the fight. Not, not yet. Not that I okay. know. Okay. All right. And um, I, I want to ask you about DJ in a second, but I just want to stay with John. I mean, the Brock thing is, is, you know, as you said, a little ways away, there are some hurdles. What do you think is next for him? What do you want for him next? Do you want the Gustafson fight? Do you want something else? What are you thinking? No, we want the Brock Lesnar fight. <laughs> we definitely want the Brock Lesnar fight. So would he, would he wait for it? Uh, I think so. I what are we so seeing now? Championship trophies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> championship trophies. Wow, look at that. We're inside the 49ers facility now. What are you doing yeah. there? Are you there to get autographs or something? Pictures? What are you looking for? Dude, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you wish. Who do you represent on, on the now. Niners? Ruben Foster. Oh, yeah, the guy who got drafted, first right? draft pick. Uh-huh. Is he round. laying off? Is he laying off the wacky tobacco? Well, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so would he wait for Brock Lesnar? Would he really wait that long, at least six more months? Uh, yeah. we, listen, Ariel, we haven't talked about it yet. We just know okay. the next fight we want. I haven't really sat down and said, hey, what do you want to do next if this happens or that happens? But, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out real soon. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. I get the impression he doesn't want to fight Gustafson. Like, he just doesn't like him and doesn't want to give him that shot. Is that accurate? I, I don't think so. I don't necessarily think that that has anything to do with it. I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think that's the case. I just think he's... He, he, listen, you know, he said, he said many times that Conor McGregor has... Uh, um, inspired him in different ways and he's, you know, he's looked up to some, some of the stuff that he's done and I think John is realizing that there's an opportunity to make a lot of money and I think the biggest money fight out there for him right now is Brock Lesnar um, and if that can happen I think that's the fight he would prefer over everything else not to say that there isn't other fights that can make a lot of money including Gustafson including the heavyweight championship including a lot of different things but mm -hmm. again we haven't spoken about what the, the plan is or isn't we haven't sat down and said hey this guy versus that guy good versus bad or F that guy He's not like that. He's just, you know, the, as the opponents, you know, line up, we know he figures it out and he just goes and does what he's got to do. So, you know, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he has something personal against Gustafson to where he wouldn't give him a shot. I don't, that, that doesn't, that's not even in his, in his, uh, in his, in his MO. It's not his MO, you know what I mean? He, he, if he's the next guy in line and that's the fight that makes sense and there's no other opportunities out there, then I'm assuming he would take that fight. But like I said, we'd have to sit down and talk about it and see what's, what's, what makes sense for him. Anyone in the UFC tell you that they're talking to Brock, they're trying to make this happen? Well, this is all that's happened on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody talked to us yesterday, and I haven't talked to anybody today. So, well, you're a mover and shaker. You're very, you're, you're, you're very on the ball. You like to get things done. I know, one thousand percent. But there's a lot of there's a lot of motion. There's a lot of things that have to happen with Brock before uh, it can work. You know what I mean? Okay. One more thing on John. Does he want to fight again this year, if possible? I would like to see that happen. I don't know if, he, if, if that's the case or not, but we'll see. We'll talk. I mean, like okay. I said, me and him, I mean, like, I'm the, I, listen, I, I just wanted to let him enjoy the, 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 yeah. the win, decompress from it all, and I'll probably see him next week, you know, Monday or so, and me and him will start talking and planning for, for the future. What did you make of Dana White's comments about your other client, Tyron Woodley? Were they fair? Um, not really. I, you know, I don't think so. I think that, that people forget that Tyron Woodley also fought four times in one year. You know what I mean? Um, there's only one other person, one other champion that's ever defended the belt like that, if I'm not mistaken, was John. And so for Tyron to get this type of, you know, um, hate to me is just kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I, you know, Dana's the promoter, and sometimes I just wish that that he'd help build stuff up instead of hurt it. But I mean, I can understand him not wanting to give him the uh, the GSP fight. I get his his logic on it. I just think that you know, when your guy has a, he tore his shoulder in the fight too. Yeah, you know, throwing as much as he wanted to wouldn't have been um, the uh, it wasn't possible. So I have to go get his shoulder looked at. Might have, you know, tore a rotator. Could be just a labrum. Who knows? But he's, you know, popped out of place. 
So, do you believe? Right do you believe he was ever in the running for the GSP fight? Because I don't. I, I mean, I do. I did. listen. I I always say this about Dana, and I've never taken the, you know my my comments back. If um, if Dana has told me stuff in the past, it's always come to pass. He's never lied to me. So he said to me, if I can make that GSP fight happen with Tyron, I'm going to make it happen. Um, but GSP is also, you know, the, the problem. So that's really where it comes from. You know what I mean? What do you mean the problem? He didn't want to fight Tyron. Hey. <laughs> he didn't want to fight Tyron. So I don't think it was anything to do with that. Right. Do you see what's behind me, by the way, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? See that? Football? I feel, you know what I feel like? I feel, camp, yeah. I feel like I'm talking to my, so, like, my high school girlfriend who's now moving on to like a hotter guy and like you're just kind of forgetting about us in MMA. Now you're with like the, the cooler. No, man, at all. I'm never thinking about MMA, bro. MMA is my thing. But I mean, you know, I got, I got so much work I got to do that it's crazy. So I'm sitting right outside the president of the 49ers office right now. Wow. Watching my client practice. Talking to us. Yeah, you have to cool. admit, though, it's probably a lot more enjoyable. It's, t- it's probably a lot more enjoyable dealing with NFL owners than MMA promoters, right? It's different, man. It's different. <laughs> it's different. That's a good question. It's yeah. different. It's uh, definitely different, man. It's just, it's just a, 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 it's a, it's a different process altogether. How did you got to D- be in it to understand it? Yes, of course. How did the DJ meeting go? Can you tell us that? It went great. It went well. It went well. DJ fights September 9th against Ray Borg. Yeah. Um, he'll break the record, and then we'll move on to some other stuff and, and try to get him into some really big fights and and, and uh make some moves that make sense for DJ and 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 help DJ, you know, get to you know reach the goals that he wants to reach. So, did they bury the hatchet? Good stuff. Yeah, they buried the hatchet. It's all good now. They buried the hatchet. DJ told Dana. Yep, they, Dana told DJ how he felt about some stuff. DJ told Dana how he felt about some stuff. They buried the hatchet. And I mean, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of different parties involved. And you know, I just brought them both together and like, let's let's get this thing right. And, and we're on point. So, I'm expecting this to 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 work out in DJ's favor in the long run. You know what I mean? And I, I think he'll be very happy, and I think the UFC will be very happy. With him. Did he get a new contract? Not yet. Okay. I'm not talking about that yet. After the fight? I'm talking about that yet. So I gotta, you know. Yeah, we'll see. After the fight, hopefully we'll sit down and we'll talk. You know what I mean? Well, I, the truth is, is that, it's, like I said, there's a lot of things that are involved. It's not as simple as, you know, let's just get a new contract. You know what I mean? DJ's got a lot of fights left on his contract now, and there's some things that we got to work through, and I think we need to win this fight, and then we'll, you know, we'll be able to sit down and talk to him. I, like I said, I just got them back to talking to each other. So, okay. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's take it little by little. Hey, one last thing before I let you go. Last week on the show, Dustin Poirier said that there was some talk of him fighting Anthony Pettis. Is that going down? I don't know if it's going down yet or not. Anthony Pettis hurt his hand um, in his last fight. So I got to give it a couple of weeks for him. I, I got to get another x-ray on it in a couple of weeks. And if his hand is healed, then maybe we can make that fight happen. As of right now, I, I just don't know what the timetable is going to look like for Anthony Pettis to come back right now. So for me to say... I mean, it's a, it's a fight that, that um, we looked into. It's a fight that they asked us, you know, about. It's a fight that I'm, I'm happy to take. Um, but I just, you know, I don't know if, if Anthony can take it right now. So I, I can't tell you yes to that yet. You know what I mean? But if his hand is ready and, you know, Poirier hasn't booked, then I think that we could possibly make that fight. By the way, your, your, your client and friend of the show, Mia Kang, was at the fight on Saturday. She also met with Bellator a month ago. Is she getting signed by any of these guys? We'll see. Still working all that stuff out. Is Mia there still interest? Has a long way to go too. Also, she's got a yeah. There's interest on everybody. I mean, everybody wants to sign her to some sort of you know developmental stuff and see where she's at and all that other stuff. So it's good stuff. It's all good stuff. But right now, I just I have to work it all through and I gotta I gotta get her you know finalized with a camp. Once I get the camp finalized, then we're good to go. Okay, one more. Yoel Romero. What's gonna happen with him? I don't know. I'm working. I'm gonna work Yoel Romero out this week. I'll figure oh. it out. Because him and Ro- Luke Rock will take in the other fight again instead of instead of Yoel kind of mess things up. So. That was in that was in, in in the works. Yeah, I mean they they offered us Luke. We said absolutely, and Luke wanted it September, whatever it was. And Yoel had um you know had a, a deep ankle sprain. He said no, let's just do it in October. But apparently he wanted Yoel five you know for a five round fight, you know what I mean, as fast as possible. And he wasn't one hundred percent able to do it. We told him we'd take the fight, and we just asked him to wait a couple of weeks. And Luke said no, he wanted David, but he wanted David Branch from the get go. He didn't want to fight uh, Yoel, hmm. so. All right. Whatever. Well, You'll all fight somebody. We'll figure it out, and then I'll get you all the title shot right after he wins. So. Enjoy 49ers camp. Luke should have fought you well. It should have been a number one contender. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Should have been number one contender. No, I was saying Luke should have fought you well. He should have fought you well. Number one contenders match. You win that fight. You're almost guaranteed the title shot. 
Now you're fighting David Branch, and if you win that, it's cool. And if you all goes and beat somebody, he's probably still going to get the title shot. Right. You know I mean, depending on who wins after the fact. But that division now with Bisping fighting this guy and the other one being out, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like it almost I don't, know, I don't even know if it matters anymore at this point. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you all might have to just fight somebody else and then see what happens after and then wait to see how all this stuff lines up and go from there. Malky, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on a big night on uh, Saturday. And there are rumors circulating right now that John Jones may be visiting New York next week. You know, I'm just saying it would be nice to have him in studio. Feel free to come along as well. But, uh, you know, it would be nice to I'll catch up. I'll do the best up. I can. All right. It, me and him might have to tag team you on next Monday. It would be nice. Case. It'd be nice. I'd love to be tag teamed by you and John Jones. That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. Aaron, you said it first. That again. You said it first. <laughs> yeah, but you said it. You kind of accepted it the way it sounded, and it wasn't sounding right. Don't do that. Okay. Thank you, Balki. <laughs> Say hi to the Niners for me. You guys have a great day, brother. Take care. All right. There he is. I will. Malki Kawa, manager to the Stars, first-round management with a very good weekend on uh, Saturday in Anaheim. And they went 3-1, and one, none bigger, of course, than John Jones. And, of course, let's not forget about Tyron Woodley and his big win, Aljamain Sterling with a massive win over Hennon Burrell.